the next 30 minutes could change your life. Hello again. I want to welcome you to Redemption with Ron Carpenter. It's just a great time that I get to be with you and invite you into my life. And hopefully you can allow me to speak into your life. And maybe in the midst of all this, God will do something wonderful that he has purposed for you a long, long time. Do you know that a man named David lost it all and he looked at God and said, do I pursue? An army had come and ravaged the entire village of David while they were off in battle. And he said, do I pursue them? And God said, not only do you pursue them, but I want you to overtake, and listen to this word, recover all. Have you ever lost anything? Of course, we all have. And there is a word for you from the Lord in this message today, that there are changes that God wants to make in your life that can cause the thing that seem to be so lost, so gone, so far away, that God can cause them to come back within the parameters of your life and allow you to enjoy things once again that seem like they have been forever gone. I am just wanting to speak and encourage some people today who God is telling you, don't take what has happened to you lying down. It's time to you to get up, pursue, overtake, and recover all. Have I got your attention yet? Don't go anywhere because we are on the path to recovery. The spiritual world is more real than the tangible one. That's what's hard for us because anything that is invisible and we can't get our hands on it is hard for us. But invisible, when you say something is spiritual, it means it does not mean it's not real. It means your eye does not have the ability to perceive it. So when you say invisible, it doesn't mean the object is invisible. It means your eye can't capture it. It's there, but your eye does not have the ability to capture the image, although it exists. And there are spiritual things dancing all around you right now, but your eye cannot capture it. And the Bible says that the things which are seen came out of the stuff that you can't see. The stuff that you can't see is spiritual. Thoughts are spiritual. The, the spiritual warfare, we used to talk about spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is in your head. Spiritual warfare is thoughts. Spiritual warfare is when the enemy tries to get you to believe a lie. It's thoughts. Ideas are spirit. Jesus said words. Are spirit. I can't see your words. I can hear them, but I can't see them. They're spiritual. Ideas are spiritual. Visions, dreams are spiritual. I can't see these things. I can't touch them. I can't grasp them. I can't get my arms around them. These things exist in the spiritual world. In other words, I had the idea of you before I ever got to preach to you. So I had downloaded you in my spirit before I ever got to see you with my eyes. You came out of something that I saw, but I couldn't see. I saw this building before I saw it. And when the guy came who wanted to build it, I told him exactly what I saw. Why? Because I already had it in the spirit. And so we had to produce it in the natural. It was already in me. I wanted a multicultural church in the deep south. I was told 25,000 times how it'll never happen. Look down your row. Everybody don't look like you. Everything came out of the unseen. God said, let there be light. And when God said it, stuff began to take shape and begin to take form. In other words, all the potential was there for a world to be created, but nothing happened until God started taking the spirit world, oh man, and speaking it into existence. Now, I'm going to connect the dots today and I'm going to help you with something, all right? 
1 John 2 and verse 20. But you have an anointing or the spirit in you from the Holy One and you know, I like that, everything. <laughs> Tell your wife or your husband if you got one, especially those of you in here, I know everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they, they roll in their eyes. You know everything, but you know it in your spirit. You don't know it in your mind. When you got born again, the Bible says you were born of the spirit. That part of you which was dead came alive to God. And the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, searches the mind of God, 1 Corinthians 2. And the Bible says that he knows everything about you. The Bible says, who knows a man except the spirit of a man? So the spirit of God searches everything in the mind of God about your life and then you get born of that spirit and that spirit comes and lives on the inside of you and he knows your past, your present, and your future. Your spirit man knows what you've been through, knows where you are, and your spirit is more acquainted with your tomorrow than you are your yesterday. The problem in life is that our spirit is already there and we're waiting on our mind to catch up. You know what we're doing when we assemble in here every Sunday and start listening to the word? We're trying to catch our mind up with what our spirit is already aware of. Your spirit knows who you are, what you're supposed to do, your purpose, and everything that's packed on the inside of you. So in other words, God took everything about you and put it and tucked it inside your spirit man. So your potential, the prayers that God's going to answer, the tomorrow he's going to bring to pass is not out there. Somebody poke your finger and just say, it's already in me. It's a... So your future is not an outside job. It's an inside job. Philippians 2, for it is God who is in you to will and to do his good pleasure. God's not bringing stuff into your life from the outside. God's going to get in you and take what's in you and kick it out. Come on, son. He's going to kick it out and kick it out. Why? Because everything that you've got the potential to do, it is already there. Good God. Am I doing okay? The career that you're going to climb is already in you. The business you're going to start, it's already in you. You don't have to pray for it, God, to get it's already in you. The ministry you're going to do is already in you. The lives you're going to impact, it's already on the inside of I gotta to talk to somebody who believes they got potential. The, because some of you are looking around you and you feel like, Ruth, man, this is ridiculous where I'm at in life. But it's not, it, that's not who you really are. There's more inside of you. But you must understand that you have got... I don't even, I can't even... Do you believe it's in there? If you do, just raise your hand. It, there's more. There's more, but it is inside of you. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. In the beginning was what? In the beginning was a word, a communicator. Something has to be communicated. And he's called the word Jesus. His earthly name is Jesus. His eternal name is word. We say the father, the son, and the Holy. No, it's really the father, the word, and the Holy Ghost. Jesus was God's communication. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word what? Was God. Next verse. He was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, I'm going to mess you up. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. So you got this Word, God, that you can't see. So I got an invisible God who starts speaking invisible words 
to create a world that's visible. Uh-uh, y'all ain't got it yet. I got a God you can't see, speaking words you can't see, and then all of a sudden, let there be light. There it is. No, God, then he sets the heavens and the earth, and there it is. He creates man, and there it is. So God understands that you've got to be a person that understands the invisible world is real, and it's communicated by words. That's why faith people look crazy. Do you know folk think you crazy? It's crazy when you ain't got two quarters to rub together to buy you a Coke and you're going around talking about I'm blessed. But what, the, what, if, what if they're looking at your condition, you are taking spiritual things, you know who you really are, you know God created you, and you say, I am blessed, what are you doing? You're taking something invisible and you're speaking it into your life and all of a sudden the invisible world starts whirling and then all of a sudden your conditions begin to change. You got to talk yourself out of your stuff. You got to talk yourself out of your mess. You got to talk yourself out of that ditch. You you gotta talk yourself out of that hole that you're in. If you understand it, somebody shout amen. I hope that these words are blessing you. I know they're blessing me. I get a blessing every time I get to preach them and hear them again myself. So you stay with us because we'll be right back and we'll continue with this message in just a moment. Here in America, we are being fed a steady diet of loose boundaries and disrespect through the many media outlets available to us today. Ron Carpenter has designed his new series, How to Change Your Life in 10 Days, to help counter a culture of dishonor and gives you keys to a total turnaround in your life. Whatever you honor is drawn towards you, and whatever you honor gives you the ability to access. Whatever you disrespect will move away from you. And whatever you disrespect, you will never have the ability to access. Receive all 10 messages from How to Change Your Life in 10 Days on CD for your ministry gift of just $50 or on DVD for just $75 or more. Call, write, or visit roncarpenter.com to order this powerful series. These 10 messages will speak into your life with a level of impact like no other series has ever done before. Change your life in 10 days. Start today. And now, back to Redemption with Ron Carpenter. Whenever God wants something to happen, He speaks to the thing that holds it and commands it to let it go. Okay, if your life is held in your spirit, then you, when you get a word, that is God commanding what holds your potential to give it up and let it go. God did not say, let there be stars. He said, let the heavens bring forth. Why? The heavens already had the potential for stars. And all he did was speak to the heavens and say, release what's already in you. He didn't say, let there be fish. He said, let the waters bring forth every living creature. In other words, water already had the potential for fish. So God spoke to the water and said, let go of your potential. I'm coming at somebody. God didn't say, let there be grass and corn and tomatoes. He said, let the earth bring forth every seed according to its kind. And all of a sudden, it began to pop up. God spoke to the ground because the ground held the potential for food. And he commanded the ground to let it go. Guess what? When he created you, he looked in the mirror and said, let us make man. So God commanded him to let go of you. You came from God. Oh, God of might. Let us make man in our image. Hey! So now when God wants something to happen in your life, you got to be in a place where you're getting word. Why? 
because when you get a word, the word goes into your spirit and your spirit, God says, let it go. So when you get a word on blessing, it comes into your spirit and your spirit has to give up what's already in it. When you're sick, you get a word on healing and your spirit gives up what's already in it. Some of you have a wonderful life and it's already in you. You just need one word from God to demand that your spirit give it up and your tomorrow can be different than your today. Shout hallelujah with me. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm going to land this plane. Keep going. Are you understanding? God put your life in your spirit. That's where your potential lies. Uninvisible things create the visible. So he takes an invisible word and calls it to touch your invisible spirit and then all of a sudden your potential becomes a reality. That's why you don't ever accept where you are and let it define you. Ever. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, a word can pull you out. A word can pull no. Let me roll with this thing here just a minute. All right. Y'all believe I can finish? I know you believe in God, but do you believe in me? I got to know you better. Now, here we go. While I'm erasing this, tell your neighbor, say, this is for you today. This is for you. This is for you. Now, let me tell you how God works. Let us come boldly into the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace. Obtain means get instantly. Mercy is when God does not let you get what you deserve. Mercy is God getting in between you and the consequences and letting the consequences hit him instead of hitting you. So when you know you've made a bad decision and you know it's coming, that's when you cry not grace, you cry mercy. Grace is when God gives you something you don't deserve. So the Bible says you can obtain mercy immediately, but you have to find. So the stuff that God has for you, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no ever entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for those who love. You've got to go on a journey to find what that is. Grace comes, a mercy comes in an instant. Grace is a lifetime. And the Bible says that God gives in measure. The Bible says you have a measure of talent, you have a measure of faith, you have a measure of grace, you have a measure of a gift. What's your measure? It's quiet in here. Do you want to know? God comes to you right where you are. Your little small five by five life. Ruth, begging, unemployed, broke, lost my saving. Husband walked out on me kids acting crazy he comes right to where you are and your life is so small and so narrowly defined frustrated discouraged even depressed Hebrews 11 verse 3 by this we know that the worlds are framed by the word of God if you've ever seen a house be framed when you see the framing of a house, you can tell what it's going to look like, but you don't know details. I don't see the paint. I don't see the carpet. I don't see the molding, but I can see where the bedroom is and see where the bathroom is and see where the kitchen is. The word worlds doesn't mean Mercury, Venus, and Mars. It means seasons of life. By this we know that the seasons of our life are framed by the word of God. So God will come to your little five by five life and he will speak a 20 by 20 word he comes to Simon which means shaky and says thou art Peter a rock 
Simon, you're not really this. You're this. He comes to Gideon, who is hiding behind a wine press. And listen to God. Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. He comes to little five by five Gideon and says, mighty man of valor. He comes to Jacob, whose name means trick, and says, thou art Israel, a prince. Woo! God comes to where you are and then speaks your potential and gives you just enough word to give you an idea of how big your life is supposed to be. So God begins to frame your world with his word. And this becomes your grace potential. Okay? So it is God who is in you to will and do his good pleasure. So God doesn't make you a 20 by 20 person from the outside in. He gets in you and starts kicking you out right here from side to side. Somebody who's ready to be kicked out on the right and kicked out on the left from the north and to the south. Enlarge my tent, expand my territory, lengthen my cords. Am I talking to anybody? It's God who is in you. And those of you who know you got some potential, get ready for God to get inside of you and start kicking. Turn around and tell three people, say, I'm ready for the kicking. When mama feels that baby kicking, that baby stretches, that baby is moving that body, that baby's shaping those hips. That's what your baby's doing. It's reshaping your life. That's why some of you are in transition. That's why some of you don't have the people you used to have in your life. That's why some of you, your friends have changed. Why? Because that thing is inside you and it's stretching, it's moving, and it's changing your life. You're going through a transition and you're about to give birth. Shout hallelujah. I'm finishing. How many of you this last year has brought you great struggle? How many of you are in great struggle right now? Why? You're not fighting over him. The devil ain't fighting you over him. He's shaky. He's a trick. He's hiding. Some of you say, well, man, I done got saved and I done got in church and all hell's broke loose. Somebody tell me to preach it. And you say, I thought things were supposed to get better. No, because now you're starting to understand I've been living way beneath my potential. And now you've got to take some territory. I came to tell some people who've been going through hell and high water, you've not been fighting over who you are. You've been fighting over who you're supposed to be. The devil's not come against you because of where your life is. The devil's coming against you because of where your life is going. Am I talking to anybody? You have a grace potential, and this word from God today is going to let your life start moving out. I don't care what the economy said. I don't care what your past has been. I am talking prophetically to a people. Your life is about to change. Get ready for it to break out on every side. For those of you who want that, shout, it's coming. Come on. It's coming. It's coming. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Woo! You know what? I hope that you're enjoying these messages. I really pour my soul. I pour my heart. I pour my life, my energy into preaching. It's a passion of mine. But it's not just a passion to get to do it. It's a passion for the results that I know the Word of God will bring in your life. And uh, I want to offer you something. We have a wonderful group of people called the friends of this ministry, our partners in ministry. One can put a thousand to flight, but two can put not two thousand, ten thousand. When we join together, God does not add our efforts. He multiplies our efforts and multiplies their results. And we have partners from all over the world who partner with this ministry to help us do what we do. There's great expense to be a worldwide voice of the kingdom 
and to all the nations of the earth. And you know what? We need a worldwide army to lock arms with us and say, I want to help do that. For those of you who pray, those of you who give us a prayer covering, those of you who pierce open the heavenly so that we can march forward with the gospel, to you I say thank you and I'm grateful. To those of you who give and some of you so sacrificially, the single mom, those who have just gone through tragedy, those who are trying to sow out of a situation, those who are giving, believing for some type of increase, to you I say thank you. And I want you to know that this ministry, we do everything we can to make sure that this good soil and good ground for you to sow into. Thank you for those who have and for those who say, I may want to start giving into this ministry. For your first month's gift of any amount, whatever God lays on your heart, I've just finished this series, Favor Haters. I want to take one of these messages and put it right in your hands for your own personal use and your personal archive to use in your downtime, in your car, while you're cooking, whenever you have a moment to be with God. Because favor is a great thing when it comes. But just because God gave you favor don't mean everybody else is going to celebrate it. Can you stand to be favored? I need to challenge you with this message. And those of you who say, you know what, I want to be a part of this wonderful ministry, we're going to give you this as a gift to say thank you. Again, thank you for all your prayers, all your gifts. You're helping us make a difference in this world. You know, before we leave, we've made it a habit lately just to start interacting with many of you. I want you to know that you can connect with me on Facebook, on Twitter at any time. We'd love for you to run by the website where, of course, you can get many of these services uh, on demand. You can get them live. We want to build a deeper relationship with you, and we're reaching out in every way we can. So many times through our social media, we just I just get some things from God. And I put them out there, little nuggets, things out of my devotion, things I feel like God speaks to me through the day. And sometimes I just tell you some stuff that don't have nothing to do with God, just me, my family, just having fun. I would love to interact with you on that level. And speaking of that, we got some tweets. And I just want you to know what Mia Mendez has said. She's from the Philly, New York City area. And she said, you can't be fruitful unless you've been seedful. She's been listening to the messages you're so right. you got to have a sowing before you can have a reaping. We also got Faison Japheth from Port Harcutt, Nigeria. That's a long way from Greenville. He said, I just watched you speak on TV and I'm determined to build a great house with God for the unforeseen. I just appreciate so much your spirit in that. You know what? God will give you a word on how you need to prepare for your tomorrow. tomorrow. We got Dawn Tripp from Houston, Texas. The testimony to my previous email goes right along with your message. We came out and we didn't even smell like smoke. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, I rejoice in your testimony. Also, Phil Cox from Spartanburg, South Carolina. That's right down the road. Potential is just as real as what you've done. You just haven't done it yet. It is all already inside of you. Everything God wants to do, it's already there. You just got to get under the right voices and the right environment to pull it out. We love you here at Redemption, and I can't wait to see you real soon. Talk to us, interact with us, connect with us, and we'll see you next time. <music>